Going out on a limb with this one. I have a little story to tell about this specific Intel i9-10980XE processor. And I decided to take that opportunity to play a little devil's advocate. We are going to argue today that the 10980XE is in fact better than the 5950X. Looking for a classy way to keep that CPU chilly? Check out Be Quiet's new line of Pure Loop all-in-one liquid coolers. Featuring an innovative inline pump for reduced noise and vibration, the Pure Loop comes in 240, 280, or 360 millimeter varieties and feature Be Quiet's legendary Pure Wings fans. They're user serviceable with a quick access fill port and the brushed metal block top and white LEDs keep your system looking sharp. Check out the link below or head to BeQuiet.com for more information. I make a lot of really dumb videos here on this channel and this... This might be the dumbest, but if you don't wanna miss out on any of these videos moving forward, make sure you get subscribed at that little red button down below. Hit that like button if you enjoy this video. And also consider following me on Twitter at BPS underscore customs. I do also say dumb things over there as well. Now in this video, we will be taking a very unpopular opinion regarding these two CPUs. And I want you to just follow along here, humor me for a little while and listen to my arguments. I know in my heart of hearts that the 10980XE is in fact not as good as the 5950X. However, it does have some merits and some reasons why you could consider it to be, at least right now, a better deal. So let's get into it. Why are we in fact talking about this processor right now? Well. This particular CPU just arrived from Intel, and I had a 10980XE before that unfortunately ran into a little condensation issue with one of our XOC sessions and some dry ice. Now, luckily, thanks to Wendell from Level 1 Techs, I had been informed that you can buy an extended single-use warranty for extreme overclocking through Intel directly. And I had made that purchase. I think it was $30 and it protects you basically against any damage to the CPU that causes it to be inoperable. I sent it back to Intel and they in fact replaced it for me. However, it took about two months and I had to argue with them back and forth several times with what they actually wanted to send me. This particular CPU came from China. And the reason that they had to do that is because they didn't have any 10980XEs that they could send me. Instead, they wanted to send me a 9900X. Not only an older CPU, but also one with only 10 cores. Their argument was that the MSRP of this versus that was the same. And that kind of caught me off guard because that's crazy. But in fact, it actually is true. When the 9900X came out, it was about $1,000. When this came out, also about $1,000. However, 18 cores versus 10 cores, not really the same thing. So I did argue with them back and forth for about two months before they finally agreed to reach out to their partners in China and get me this CPU to replace the damaged one that was no longer functional it finally arrived and I wanted to do some testing with it. And this is the perfect way to do that. So what exactly does the 10980XE have over the 5950X? Why can we consider arguing in favor of this CPU over this one? Well, in fact, the most important thing is that you can actually buy this processor right now, whereas finding a 5950X is near impossible. When these first came out, one of the reasons why they didn't do so well, not only were they basically exactly the same as the 9980XE, but also the fact that you could not buy them at retail. In order to get one, you had to go through an SI. You also didn't really see any build projects with them on YouTube. You didn't see a whole lot of reviews. You couldn't find them on Amazon or on store shelves. And Intel really didn't push them all that hard. But quietly over the past few months, they have become available. And the best way if you're in the United States to get one is at Micro Center, where they are regularly on sale for between eight and $900. On Amazon, they're usually a little bit more between 900 and $1,000, but compare that to the 5950X, which isn't available at retail anywhere. And if you wanna get one, you have to go through third-party resellers charging anywhere between 11 and $1,400. Despite how good the 5950X is, it is not 
a $1,400 CPU. Other advantages for Team Blue here, 48 PCIe lanes versus only 24. The availability of quad memory channels versus dual memory channels and the capacity of 256 gigabytes of RAM versus only 128. Now, while we have definitively proven on paper that the 10980XE is way better than the 5950X, we do still have to do some testing and that's where things might fall apart. No CPU comparison is really complete unless we see some Cinebench scores. So this is Cinebench R20 and we have both the multi-core and the single core scores for both the 10980XE on the left and the 5950X on the right hand side. The 5950X kind of dominating here, at least initially. Let's take a quick look at some sweet side-by-side -side action of actual gameplay in five different titles. All of these tests run at 1440p, which is a good compromise. It allows the CPU to stretch its legs, but also does not make the game GPU bound really all that much, especially when we're using an RTX 3090. Here is Cyberpunk 2077, and just like all of our titles, it was run at max settings, including ray tracing, if available. So here we could see on the left, the 10980 XE consistently running five to 10 FPS different than the 5950X on the right. I specifically chose this path to walk because it does include some ray tracing and some interaction with pedestrians. And then I jumped in the water. All of my testing was done with an RTX 3090 and Overwatch was a great way to balance out the extremely difficult Cyberpunk 2077. The frame rates that we were seeing here are in the high 200s to the low to mid 300s. And as such, you're not gonna get quite the disparity between the two CPUs simply because in real world gameplay, you're never gonna notice a difference between 310 and 330 frames per second. Still, the 10980XE did lag behind the 5950X just by a little bit, and you can clearly see that on the screen. Running Overwatch also allowed me to get in some runs with different APIs as it uses DX11. Switching back to DX12, we have Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Now, this was a little more difficult to get a duplicate run, and I just kind of ran around the map in a multiplayer scenario against some bots to try to capture some gameplay, and I was actually really surprised with the disparity on this game in particular. There were some scenes where there was a 20 or 30 FPS difference between the 5950X and the 10980XE on the left. Especially in a game like Black Ops Cold War, that 30 FPS is going to make a huge difference. Jumping back up to a higher frame rate game, we have Doom Eternal and the Vulcan API. Again, still 1440p. This was at Ultra Nightmare settings. And this game is just so frantic that it was difficult for me to make the same run twice. However, I think you get the idea. The 10980XE on the left was typically running in the low 300, sometimes the high 200 as far as average frame rate goes. And on the right, the 5950X was typically running in the low 300 to mid 300. So again, not a scenario where you're going to actually be able to experience that big of a difference in your actual gameplay. However, it is there. The perfect way to end this was with Shadow of the Tomb Raider because I could use the CAN benchmark here. It pretty accurately represents what the gameplay is like and it makes for a much nicer viewing experience for you guys where you can see the actual side by side. And I want to direct your attention to the frame rates because we're seeing the 5950X dominate the 10980XE here by 20 or 30 FPS consistently across the board. One of the things to note here is GPU utilization, and this is consistent across all of our tests. It's close to 100% with the 5960X system, leading to better performance. Clearly the IPC disparity crushes the 10980XE in basically every single test. Despite the AMD processor having a deficit in cores and in available memory, it doesn't seem to really matter at all. It operates at such a higher instructions per clock that the 10980XE really has no chance of keeping up in almost anything, especially when it comes to gaming. But we are not here to argue that the 5950X is better than the 10980XE. In fact, we are here to argue the opposite, although it is getting pretty difficult to do so. 
I have a soft spot in my heart for processors like this. I've done a number of retro builds on the channel featuring Extreme Edition processors. I used the 7980XE in my personal editing system for all the videos on this channel for a number of years. And when I got the 10980 in studio, I was really excited to try it out. But it just seems like Intel keeps falling further and further behind. The 14 nanometer process when it debuted on Skylake and continued in CPUs like this at first was revolutionary and now just seems like ancient, ancient technology. It's one of the reasons why I'm not overly excited about the next generation of Intel stuff. They haven't moved any of their process technology forward in six years now. And you're basically seeing these same technology make their chips that came out with Skylake. You have the 11900K leaks recently showing that at full load on an eight core processor, it was hitting 98 degrees Celsius with presumably a 360 millimeter radiator, just not acceptable anymore. And I really want to root for Intel because I do like processors like this but it just seems like it's getting to be impossible. So thank you for indulging me on my mini story time. Uh, I know that there's gonna be a lot of people out there in the comments that are calling me an Intel shill for even considering that the 10980XE could even potentially be better than a 5950X. But it is important to realize that you should be taking different perspectives when looking at certain comparisons throughout your life. It doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be just in PC parts. It allows you to see both sides of an issue. It allows you to see the merits of one versus another. Even if one is clearly the victor, it doesn't necessarily mean that every single point about the other product or the other side or the other argument is wrong or in this case, inferior. In fact, the 1090XE does have a good amount of merit here. It's just maybe not as much merit as you would hope. So that's it for this week's video, guys. I am gonna be doing a bunch of different kind of content on the channel coming up, specifically because I know you're burnt out on anything with a GPU in it. Can't buy them right now. I know you don't really wanna see them. So we are gonna slow down on the builds. We will still be doing some here and there, but there is a bunch of other stuff that I wanna get into. I just got a 3D printer. I'm gonna be trying to make some content on that. Maybe get into doing some other overclocking of some components that maybe you didn't think about overclocking or anything else, I'm not quite sure. There is a bunch that's been on my mind and, and in the hopper for a little while, but if there's anything that you guys wanna see, make sure that you leave a comment down below and I'll try to get to it as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video.